again. What does our actress guest today share in common with actresses Kabina Wright, Stephanie Zimbalist, and Hazel Dawn? Why they were all named after their mothers. A former Oscar nominee and a current Golden Globe nominee, she's the dynamic Sally Kirkland. And now, here's your man of the half hour, Skip B. Lowe. Sally Kirkland, Golden Globe Award. Ah, nominee, 1992. 1992. Um, now, that's for the haunted story. The haunted, a true story. True story? Is it a true story? Mm -hmm. It's based on the uh, best-selling novel, The right. Haunted, A True Story, uh -huh. by uh, Janet Smurl and her husband and the Warrens, who are famous psychic researchers. Um, and I did it last year. <clears throat> Ironically, it was really the first role since Anna for which I was, um, as your announcer said, lucky enough to be nominated for an Oscar. That was a very personal role because it was, you know, my breakthrough and it was my own demonstration of what it's like to have been an actress for 25 years and then have someone like notice or not notice. And also to break op open the subject of Czechoslovakia and the Eastern European immigrant Brown. problem which now is no longer because since then Václav Havel has changed everything in Czechoslovakia. Um, but when we did it, that wasn't the case and he had been in and out of prison. Right. This role in The Haunted is my second breakthrough role, I feel, because my parents both died, my mother just before uh -huh. I filmed it, and I didn't know where to take all of my emotions. And so when I was given this role of Janet Smurl, who goes through hell and comes out the other side because of her belief in God and in her family, uh -huh. um, I just decided to admit publicly that I was in a lot of pain and that I wanted to release the pain and that I wanted to publicly show how much I love God and this uh -huh. part allowed me to do all of that. And the story of The Haunted in a nutshell is um, that she went through 10 years of paranormal experiences and she didn't get too much help from the Catholic Church right. when she asked for an exorcism. Right. And, and in a little house in, in Pennsylvania, which I went to see. Did you study, do a lot of homework I on that? I did. I did a tremendous amount of research, and, and I became best friends with Sylvia Brown, who's one of the top Psychic. psychic researchers in the country, 38 years' work with the police solving crimes. And Sylvia said that this film, The Haunted, A True Story, was the best, the most authentic she had ever seen mm -hmm. in any film. Mm -hmm. um, because she said that we all, the director, Bob Mandel, who did FX right. and Independence Day, Bodan Zachary, the producer, myself, and Fox, took the time to make it psychological rather than um, just about special effects and just about, right. you know. But, the, but you had a lot of physical in this. Yeah, I, I actually Kirkland did. Sally Kirkland jumped uh, up and down in beds I, and stuff. Was that I really was you? dragged around yeah. by the entity a lot, and there was a levitation scene. Now, I would say the levitation is the only thing that, that I find difficult to believe happened. I mean, uh -huh. unless you're Christ, um, and I don't <laughs> think too many of us wanted, you know. Uh, you don't believe that really happened? I, I. I'm, I, like anybody, have to hold my little dubiousness. Um, I believe that she saw what she saw, she heard what she heard. Uh -huh. I believe that she was thrown around the way right. she was. I believe that things happened to the children the way they did. When it comes to levitation <laughs> and Christ walking, walking over the water, so, yeah. then I have to like draw the line and say, well, if I saw it with my own eyes, I'd believe it. Uh -huh. And. Uh, I guess the reason why we all believe in Christ is that enough people saw it with right. their own eyes. Right. Now, I did talk to about 10 witnesses from the town who, who they didn't see her levitate, but mm -hmm. they saw and heard a lot of the things that went on in the house. Uh -huh. but was it a small town? A, a very small town um, in Pennsylvania, which now yeah. I'm getting, uh, what do you call it, stage fright, and I've forgotten the name of it. But we drove for hours and hours and hours. Uh -huh. I flew to New York, and then I drove. You couldn't fly in there. And it was a little bit like a little town from the 50s. It was kind uh -huh. of like nothing had changed from the 50s. Uh -huh. And it was a factory town. And when I did my research, I found out that um, that you know the American Civil War had been in the area, that there had been actually quite a few wars, both with the Indians and the right. Cowboys and with the British and with the Americans. And this was war country. Yes. And so what I found out in my psychic research is that, look, and, and this is also in my own teachings in the movement of spiritual awareness, is that what we see 
is 10%. Right. And then there's another 90% that's what we call the invisible realms. Mm -hmm. And there's good energies in the invisible yeah. realms, and there's negative energies. Right. And it's not about um, God and the devil. It's not that simple. It's, it's like, I believe uh, in reincarnation, I believe that some souls, if they die tragically, mm -hmm. their soul does not necessarily go to the other side. It, uh -huh. it becomes a disembodied spirit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'll go into a room or a house or a land I know when I was in Egypt and Israel during the Kuwait War, which I just happened to be there during the Kuwait War. I just came back from Moscow. You're during always the in those <laughs> scenes, Russia and all that. Go I was ahead. just in Moscow when the whole we'll government talk about broke that. down. Go ahead. But sometimes I'll walk on a certain land and I'll just do a light column. You want to see what a light column is? This is a light okay. column. You just, and you can do it in your own words. Anyone can do it, wherever they are. Dear Father, Mother, God, we ask just now for the light of the Holy Spirit, the light of the Christ, to come from the highest possible point down to the ground below where we stand. We ask that any negative energies be dispersed and transmuted into the light so that any soul that ever comes into this space feels light and that if there are any disembodied spirits or otherwise negative forces that they be released at this time and given permission to go to the other side. And mm. it's like I did a Sally poetic Kirkland version really of that. Sally knows yourself, don't you? You yeah. know who you really are. I hope so. <laughs> no, but the way I, you... You well, really know who you are. I like to think I do. When did you I get do? into the, all the spiritual beliefs? Well, that that's a good question. When I was pronounced dead in 1966. Uh, you were pronounced dead? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, I was pronounced by a doctor clinically dead in 1966 from um, from an overdose, which, which was not really drugs? more conscious. Yeah. You were taking uh, drugs those days? I was not consciously taking drugs. It's one of those things very much like Marilyn's thing where, you know, I didn't know that I was doing too many you know, forgot how many you count. Whatever, how, but, that right. kind of thing. That's partially true. To be truer would be to say that I was a guinea pig for the people doing LSD experiments, and I was underage, and I had to sign papers saying that I would uh, be responsible for whatever happened. And Timothy Leary situation? It wasn't with him directly, but, but a lot of his people. Right. And it was with psychiatrists, and they didn't know enough about LSD at the time. And so the good news is that I tapped into an understanding um, of... of of past life, trans, transcending past lives. Right. I really got into that with the hallucinogens. The bad news is <laughs> it affected my brain tissue and I, uh, I had a nervous breakdown and out of the nervous breakdown came this overdose. And that was, uh, what, what are we now, 1992? That's over 20 years ago. When I was a child, I didn't even know what I was doing. I was underage, but, but the bottom line is that, that the good news is that because that happened to me at such a young age, I got on a spiritual path right away. At the, ah, at the time, it was uh, Hinduism, uh -huh. and I discovered a lot about the law of karma, about right. a lot of times when bad things happen to us, it's not necessarily because of something that happened in this lifetime, mm -hmm. and it could very well be that we're paying off a karmic debt from another lifetime, and we're balancing the score from having been a bad person or whatever right, in right. that lifetime. Now, once I understood that theory, I forgave myself and a lot of people around me for things that, that I was feeling victimized by, and I stopped being a victim. Right. So my path went from being brought up a Christian to then becoming a Hindu. <laughs> I think for a while I was a Buddhist. Then I was an atheist. No, I was never an atheist. And then I found the movement of spiritual inner awareness, which combines uh, Christ sitting at the head of the church with the philosophies also of Eastern philosophies. Uh -huh. Because what people usually don't mention or talk about, the, um, the people that only believe in the Bible per se, right. is that there were a lot of lost years of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, if one was to read, say, the Aquarian Gospel, you would find mm -hmm. that Christ did go to India. He did go to... Persia. He did go to China and Japan. Right. And so Christ's teachings truly embodied reincarnation and Eastern philosophies as well as everything we know to be the Ten Commandments and the mm. Bible. So my church, the Movement of Spiritual, Spiritual Awareness, right. en encompasses both East and West. Does that help Sally Kirkland? I would say it helps your acting. Oh, I hope so. I mean, I when you're on the camera and working and performing and all this your combination, you, you work it together, right? You see, when I was pronounced dead, and I had already been an actress and a very young one, I didn't go to college. And a good one, too. Thank you. And I had already, you know, kind of won a lot of, I don't know whether I won awards. I won a lot of critical acclaim at a very young age. I think I was making money at, at acting when I was 16 or 17. And uh -huh. it, with James Earl Jones off Broadway. I was always very you lucky. You were doing theater, a lot of theater. Mm -hmm. Sally a lot Kirkland. Of theater and a lot of underground films. Yeah, under, in, underground films. The I Andy Warhol Andy, crowd. With okay, Andy go Cedric, ahead. With Andy uh -huh. Warhol. Uh, did a thing called Coming Apart in 69 with Rip Torn and Vivica Limberts. Watched my name go up on three marquees in, in New York on three films, uh, Coming Apart, Brand X, and Futz. Futz uh -huh. was directed by the man who directed Hair 
and Jesus Christ Superstar, Tom right. O'Horgan. But the reason why I bring all that up is that it was very young to be successful, and sometimes when kids make it really early, right. they do turn to drugs or to anything because you're in the fast lane, right. you don't even know who you are yet, uh -huh. and you're suddenly like out there with the public recognizing uh -huh. you, and I would get in taxi cabs in New York, and they'd say, hey, Sally, what's happening? Uh -huh. Then I began getting phone calls from total strangers, and then I began feeling very scared and not knowing where to turn. And uh -huh. somewhere in the midst of all of that, I, like a lot of people in the 60s, got into the LSD thing. Now, when I made a decision to come back to acting, it was only after two years of giving it up. And right. Shelley Winters called me up and she said, I wrote a play for you and Bobby De Niro called One Night Stands and a Noisy Passenger. Uh -huh. She was a noisy passenger and I was supposed to play her. This was theater. Theater, yeah. Actors Playhouse, right. 1969, 70, oh. maybe 71, I don't know. Shelley directed it? Shelley ended up taking over the direction. <laughs> and uh, I was supposed to play her from 17 to 40, but as it turned out, Diane Ladd played her at 40, and I played her at 17. And De Niro ended up being in the last section, not in the section with me. Right. But uh, she, she and Bobby really kind of talked me back into acting. I had quit for two years. and. In the time I quit, I taught 14 classes of yoga a week, and I taught people how to meditate, and I did it for service, not for money. I lived on unemployment. You did it for service. Yeah. It, my, life is a, my life is about giving back. Once you compassion. You have a lot of compassion. Well, thank you like for saying Sally, that. You know, Shelly Winters teaches the yeah. homeless, runaway children yeah. right now at the Action She just studio. called me to get me to go yeah, help her out. Yeah, she's so wonderful. You yeah. and Sally, you you're just like her very much. Well, I think once you've been pronounced dead and you're, giving a se you're given a second shot, um, I said this recently on the Geraldo show, it's like your whole life after life becomes one of since, thank you God, I was given a second chance, my uh -huh. life is about giving back, it's right. not about taking. So when I went back to acting, I didn't want to do anything that wasn't going to somehow touch people's hearts. So I turned down, people would think I'm crazy. Someone just told me today, <laughs> I was having a colonic, they told me, uh, <laughs> they said, you're very arty, aren't you? You're very arty. <laughs> and I said, yeah. And they said, you're probably on the cutting edge, aren't you? And I said, I don't know. Am I? You know. And anyway, that was her way of complimenting me. And I think I made a conscious decision that I would turn down anything that didn't touch me. Uh -huh. So all the roles I've played, for better or worse, some of them have done well, some of them haven't uh -huh. done well, have uh -huh. been women who I felt opened people's hearts. Right. And, uh, and I turned down $2 million in the last three years of people I didn't think uh -huh. opened people's uh -huh. hearts. Now, this part that I came on the show today to talk about in the heat of passion. The heat of passion. In the heat of in the, passion. Okay, go ahead. Co-starring with Nick Corey, wonderful actor, um, uh, and Michael Green, who's currently in For the Boys, and, uh -huh. and Jack Carter, the comedian. Anyway, um, it's my first time back with Roger Corman in years. He kept me going all through the 70s. Uh -huh. and. Uh, it's a psychological thriller with a large overtones of things that happen to women right now, like rape, incest, um, uh, marital dysfunction, uh -huh. based on childhood dysfunction. Right. And I deal with all those issues, and it's, it's, it's my answer to The Postman Rings Twice and Fatal Attraction. Ah. It opens in L.A. Uh, February 14th or 21st at the Lemley, uh, or I Lamel, Lemley. I don't Lemley. know. doesn't matter. Lemley chain. Um, it doesn't matter. It opens in New York, anyway. New York uh -huh. January 24th, uh -huh. and throughout the country um, in the heat of passion. And... Uh, and, and and that was really exciting for me to do because I'd never done that much. Uh -huh. uh, I actually kill somebody in that. And I've never done that in a film except once, which I did, and then I regretted it later. Uh -huh. But I did it in this film because of the abuse to my child. And abuse, I just Abuse to your child? Yeah. I can't go too much into it without ruining the film for okay, people. Okay. But I think that when I turned down the $2 million for all the times that I was going to have to take a gun, for instance, in High Stakes, which was right. a film I did, which, With, which was uh, a precursor to Pretty Woman, actually. I did it in 89, and Pretty Woman came later. But it was the same idea, a millionaire and a hooker. Uh -huh. But in that, I was supposed to kill the pimp. And I said to Amos Kolek, the director, I can't do it. I just can't do it. Women I know don't go buy guns and kill. Uh -huh. And, um, they do, Sally. You don't believe that. A small minority. Okay. Actually, I am being talked to right now t um, about playing the serial killer, the woman who's in jail. Uh, her trial starts next week. Right. Eileen Warnes and um, Jackie Giroux, who has the rights to her story, just produced me and gave me an associate producer credit uh, in Hollywoodland with myself and Diane Ladd and Sean Young Great. And, and Keith Coogan and Renee Taylor. Uh -huh. and, got to know her and she started talking to me about Eileen and um, she's written a book and to the movie. and I got interested only because I wanted to show Eileen's dysfunction you know she her mother was actually her sister 
her father beat her terribly when really? she was a child, and she never she never had a chance. She never had a chance. Now, maybe that sounds unnecessarily sympathetic to right. someone who would kill, but I think if you can do a story like I did in The Haunted, like I did in In the Heat of Passion, like I hope to do with the um, Eileen Warnes story, uh -huh. um, and, and various other films that I, in also coming out in March, Primary Motive with me and Judd Nelson, I play the wife of a man running for governor, Richard Jordan, and uh -huh. Judd Nelson is on the other side trying to show that he's lying right. in, his, in his campaigning. Uh -huh. And the bottom line is that he beat me up when I was younger, and, and my child never had a chance, really. Ended up in a mental institution, then ended up shooting herself during the campaign. Oh, I see. Actually, the girl is played by John Savage's daughter, and John's in the film, too. You enjoy those kind of roles? I too? like those kind of roles because Why? I like showing society what we have to improve upon. Right. I don't think there's, I think it's fun to do films like I did, like Cold Feet, which were entertainment and, you just, and uh, silly. You're in, you're in the, uh, the JFK. Kennedy film, JFK. I fought to get you're, in that film. You I, fought. I, you're I, in the opening <laughs> scene of the uh, JFK. I play proudly. Thank you, Oliver Stone. Thank you, Kevin Costner. I love Oliver Stone. I, I, I think he's great. I love Oliver Stone. Go ahead. Let it be known, Sally Kirkland loved working with Oliver Stone. And Skippy Lowe, too, um, because I think he's a, they say genius. he's not American, but he's a true Excuse American. Excuse me. He's true American. Excuse he's bringing out, me. He's bringing out things Excuse that, I love him. Go ahead. This is when I became an actor. I I have to watch the time. How much now, more minutes ahead, do we ahead, have? Sorry. We have a lot of time. Don't worry about uh, it. I, when I became an actress, I wanted, I wanted my art right. to be about vision. I wanted to have the world understand truth. Right. I wanted to hold up the mirror to society and right. say, this is what we're doing that is courageous and good, and this is what we're doing, which, excuse me, yeah. is full of shit. Right. And to me, I was lucky. I was, brought, I was brought up in a family, the Kirkland family in Philadelphia, that was all about politics. My grandmother's grandfather was the mayor of Philadelphia, Mort McMichael. Her father was a judge of Philadelphia. And her husband, Frederick Kirkland Sr., founded the Historical Society right. um, of Philadelphia. So they even named a street, Kirkland. So I was shown when I was five Lincoln's letters, Washington's letters, the original Declaration mm -hmm. of Independence. So I didn't have an average childhood. I was right. seeing the stuff of the history of America. So it was embedded in me that that we should be proud to be Americans right. because of what happened in Philadelphia. Okay. And so over the years, I've watched very carefully what goes on with our country. And sometimes I say, right on. And sometimes I say, wait a second. Wait a That's second. Right. You're not bringing the truth out. <laughs> I don't uh -huh. think we are being told everything, everything. here. Right. Let's put Absolutely. the cards on the table. So I like everybody, and certainly like all women, were totally in love with Jack Kennedy. Uh -huh. I mean, I was a kid, but it was kind of like, Yes, 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 and Bobby Kennedy, and Martin Luther I marched with Martin Luther uh -huh. King. Um, I tried you did march with Martin Luther King? Yes, I marched with Martin Luther King. I, w I was adopted on a level by Shelley Winters, who w would all the time fill me with wonderful stories about how she supported Jack and Bob Kennedy right. in their campaigns. There's an extraordinary photograph in her house to this day. Eleanor Roosevelt is her right. lady. Right, and, and, uh, and Shelley, being my... I mean, we call each other godchild, godmother, but in actuality, she adopted me when I was 17, got me in the actor's studio, uh -huh. got me my agent, got me my first uh -huh. jobs, uh -huh. just got me my most recent job in uh -huh. Russia with uh -huh. Menachem Golan playing a, a German Jew with a black wig. Did she give you that part? She got Russia? me that part. She never stopped. She, hmm. she is Mother Earth to a lot of actors. She Something happened in Russia when you were there, though. I, headlines all over the place. What was that about? The, the, I don't the, know. I didn't, the plane couldn't come back or something? I don't know, what but happened? They, they didn't let any uh, planes out of Moscow. There's a fuel strike as well as right, a red strike. Right, exactly, right. And um, <laughs> Moscow, I'm here to tell you, all you Americans, if you ever felt sorry for yourself, <laughs> go to Moscow. And you will feel like you have, no matter what your income is or no matter, you know, I mean, I don't want to talk about the homeless because that is a situation. I don't want to talk about AIDS. I will talk about AIDS. We certainly will. We're going to talk about minute. AIDS. Right. But, but the bottom line is, no matter what your situation, they really have a tough time right now. Not only was it 15 degrees below the whole time I was uh -huh. there, to the point where I was constantly, when I wasn't in front of the camera with the hot lights, I would put myself in the dressing room uh -huh. uh, where we got changed with about 10 blankets and a fur coat uh -huh. and five pairs of thermal underwear, and I would wait until they called my name, and then I would go <laughs> running out and get in front of the hot lights and go back. And That's the only way I could survive the uh -huh. cold of Moscow. Uh -huh. The government just offered the people who were renting apartments to own their apartments free, free. with a small tax uh -huh. property charge, and a quarter of the population had already said no when I was there because they were so scared because they've been so used to being taken care of. Uh -huh. They didn't know what that meant to own their own apartment. And I'm sitting uh -huh. there saying, no, no, say yes, <laughs> say yes. <laughs> 
And then it's true, although the city is very clean, and you don't see homeless is on the streets. Is the city clean? The, the city is extraordinary. You said you beautiful. don't see homeless? You don't see the homeless, and it's 15 degrees below. Okay. It's 15 degrees below. So I was told the homeless are in, in you know, what do you call it, deserted buildings. Right, right. Um, you do see the lines around the block. You see the bread lines. You see the fuel strike lines. But That's you why don't I see the homeless, a, darling. No, you don't. Don't, huh? You don't. But well, the age but it's that time I wanna, of year. I want to know it's about that time the, of year. Yeah, I know. But the AIDS is so taken Just before over. we get to okay, AIDS. Okay, go ahead. Um, I want to say that I went to a Russian orphanage. As a, I'm a minister in the movement of spiritual inner awareness, and part of my ministry is to go to places where people are less right. well off than I yeah. am. And uh, part of why I'm here today is to talk about some We're going to talk about the AIDS, right. By a, a young man who died of AIDS. Uh, but anyway, I went and I saw 30 Russian little children. children uh -huh. And they sang Russian songs for me. Oh, sweet. And I insisted on hugging each one of them. They were so shy. They'd never had an American come in and oh, insist on hugging each sorry, one of them. that's sweet. And one of them gave me a painting, and I meant to bring it today. And she was 12. She painted herself. It was this big. Uh -huh. And I said, I want to tell everybody about you all. It's called Orphanage Number 52. They have an arrangement with, with someone named Bill Harwood in Palo Alto, uh -huh. California. Uh -huh. Bill, if you hear about this, please get in touch with Sally Kirkland through William Morris <laughs> or Michael Linden Green, 271 Don't give me your number. Everyone will call Sally Kirkland, darling, please. This is a, okay. it, a, a specifically about Russian orphans. Okay. Anyway, I want to help them with their exchange program. They ha they're teaching them English now. Yeah. And uh, one little boy is coming over this summer, uh -huh. and he speaks English. And I met him, Demo. How cute. And I told them that I hoped in the future we could arrange to have them come uh -huh. to summer camp over uh -huh. here, experience America. Uh -huh. And hopefully in the future, I'm putting it in the light, God, Americans will be able to adopt Russian children. Sally. <laughs> now I want to talk about wait, AIDS. Wait, let me, let me tell you. Ah! All our friends are dying of AIDS now. Everyone. Yes, yes. A lot of people. Yes. It's not just the homosexuality crowd. No. It's everybody. No. We have to let the people be aware. You had a friend, a very dear friend. Two. Two, Jen? Two, but one, my best friend of 20 years. Right. Carl Parsons, who was my manager. Wonderful my manager. He handled, yes, he was great. I yes. know Carl. And he died December 20th. And, and you had another one who he, he did paintings. Mark Vito, um, he was an astrologer, not only to me, but over the years to Reagan and Streisand. A lot was that Reagan's people. astrologer? One of them. Oh, yeah. really? And he. Um, I want to ask you to ask your cameraman to show us He of will. I certainly will. Because his name was Mark Vito, uh -huh. and he. I went into his studio and I have my Let's first see session. It. Yeah, go ahead. Talk. Go as go I'm ahead. talking, I'll just tell you about just Mark. Start. Just show the paintings. We'll talk over These it. These are go his ahead. paintings. Some of them, as you'll notice, are from the tarot card uh -huh. selection. And one of them is called Boy Blue. Right. And one of them was me as St. Joan. I commissioned him to paint uh -huh. me as St. Joan. Uh -huh. So the rather large one of the woman, uh -huh. without any writing, is his idea of Sally Kirkland if she were St. Joan. Oh. And these paintings are very personal to me because I said... The colors. Beautiful, Sally. Aren't they? The colors. Well, Mark... He, I he said loved to color, him, did he? He, he loved color, and he was, uh, he died in a hospice, and uh -huh. he was uh, also getting help from AIDS Project LA. I think the hospice was in the valley. And I said to him, look, I know you have AIDS, and I'd like to give you a show in the fall. Do you think you right. can get 20 paintings together? And he said, sure. These are not all of his paintings. These right. are some of them. And, and we can help raise money for your health. Plus, uh, bring attention to AIDS Project LA uh -huh. and the Angel Food Project that comes out of AIDS Project LA uh -huh. where they bring hot food to people at home with AIDS and cancer and terminal illness who can't leave their beds. Uh -huh. And and um, I know at the end of your show... Uh, I'd like to sh just uh, show that paintings once again. And yeah. underneath the paintings, can we put a phone number, Sally? They uh, there's two phone numbers. Uh, One would be to be in touch with me because I'd like to show people interested, you know, the whole group of his paintings. Right. Um, and the other is the number for APLA, the AIDS Project LA. You're they, going to donate this uh, well, paintings? Well, yes, relevant to, you know, a, a worthy um, monetary right. offering. The money will not go to me. It will go to AIDS Project LA and or the Angel Food Project. And um, They do great, Angel Food they, Project. They go they, to your house, uh -huh. and uh, I know that I'm, I'm very honored that they used my name for their recent fundraiser along with a bunch of celebrities. I understand Elizabeth Taylor did something right. for them recently also. And, uh, like, if I'm too busy doing a movie, I can, like, do what I'm doing here, or right. I can give them money, or, or uh, send someone to the store with food, and then have them bring the food. There's so many ways you can help out. Uh -huh. People can call the AIDS Project LA. Uh, the number will be flashed on your screen, and they can find out in May there's going to be a huge fundraiser. Uh -huh. um, paintings are going to be auctioned off, uh -huh. and other valuables. And there's ways you can help. You can just you can show up if you have money to buy, uh -huh. and that money will go to the AIDS patients. Oh, or nice. you can give 
your valuables or uh -huh. paintings or art or uh -huh. you know sculpture yes. or whatnot. Or you can call and say, can I be of service? Right. You know, in some way. And the other thing I wanted to say is that my friends John Roger and Peter McWilliams wrote three books, You Can't Afford the Luxury of, of a Negative right, Thought, right. which was for AIDS patients and terminally ill patients, and that's out there.